Alright, uh, <clears throat> we're not usually this late, but that icebreaker did take a while, so hopefully that's alright. It's the first week. Does anybody have homework yet? Oh, man. <laughs> alright, well, uh, <clears throat> we'll see what we can do here. Um, we are studying through the Gospel of Matthew. Um kind of doing it quickly uh, and just kind of getting glimpses. Um, and so that's that's what we're doing here, um, Gospel of Matthew. Uh, tonight we're going to be in chapter 21. We're going to look at verses 28 through 32. Uh, you probably have a title in your Bible. If you need a Bible... There's still a couple back there. There's still a couple back there. Um, <coughs> and if by chance you don't own a Bible, we'd love to get you a Bible um, because it is very important for you to have uh, God's Word uh, for, for reading uh, and, as Second Timothy would say, uh, for teaching, for training, um, in righteousness, reproof, rebuke, exhortation, all those sort of things. But... Um, <coughs> just great to have. Um, also, the other thing that I wanted to mention, um, towards, it was it was before the new year, so this was a little while ago, um, I posted on our Facebook page, if, if you're on Facebook and you also would like a way to get announcements and things that are going on, what's happening with New Life, uh, LHU New Life is our Facebook group, uh, you can go ahead and join that if you'd like. Uh, but I had posted something there uh, around the new year about reading through the Bible in a year. Uh, and that's something that, that we have uh, set out to do, uh, firstly at Big Woods and because we are a part of Big Woods, uh, here at New Life as well. Uh, so there are two plans that are available, or you can find your own plan and do it that way. That would be great, too. Um, that's, that's what I did. Uh, and so you would like to jump on that train. It's not too late. Uh, and, I mean, you wouldn't even have to, like, catch up or anything. You just you can just start afresh. Uh, but to, to read the Bible in a year, uh, to get the overarching story, uh, all the things that, that happen from Genesis to Revelation, everything in between, uh, would be great to know. Uh, so I would, I would encourage you, I would challenge you to, to do that as well. Uh, if you want more information about it, come talk to me um, afterwards and we can, we can get you set on that course. Uh, so with that being said, <clears throat> I'm going to read this passage. Uh, so if you don't have a Bible with you, it's up there. Uh, and that's what we'll be talking about. So let's go ahead and read Matthew 21, verses 28 through 32. It says, What do you think? A man had two sons. And he went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterward he changed his mind and went. And he went to the other son and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even when you saw it, you did not afterward change your minds and believe him. Let me pray. <clears throat> God, thank you for your word. Thank you that we can get into it and study it and know you through it. Uh, would you help us to do that tonight? Uh, help us to apply it to our lives and live according to what it says. Uh, we love you, we praise you, and thank you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 
So we've been uh, going through Matthew since August, um, and this is this is where we're at right now. And we've we've covered a lot of ground, but um, you don't have to feel left behind or anything like that. Um, and no, that was not a pun for anyone who gets the left behind. Anyway, <clears throat> terrible joke that I didn't even realize I made until after I made it. That's fine. So. Matthew is a gospel we started uh, in the beginning with kind of kind of probably the text that you heard around Christmas time, Emmanuel, God with us. Uh, and throughout the gospel of Matthew, we've been seeing that being played out, that Jesus is God with us. Um, and so when we when we come to our passage tonight, <clears throat> if we look at the parables before and after what's going on, we, we see this kind of theme that is being brought up, and that is that the authority of Jesus and his authority coming from the fact that he is God is continually being challenged by those who are in supposed authority of the day. So he's got the religious leaders, and, and in our passage, I think it says uh, just before that, it's the, the elders and the, uh, the chief priests and all of that. They're continually challenging his authority. Uh, You can check out verses 23 to 27 to see uh, a more specific example of that. Uh, But but then when we come to our passage tonight, and and even the the Gospel of Matthew as a whole, um, much of it is addressing the question, who will enter the kingdom of God? So Matthew is writing and, and answering the question, who gets into heaven? And I think the parable that that we just read and the two parables that come after it answer that question. And and it's it's a clear and simple answer. Those who obey God get into heaven. And so that's that's kind of just the main point of, of what we will be talking about tonight. That belief is seen by obedience. So, so if you're here tonight claiming to be a follower of Christ, claiming to be his disciple, you prove that by how you live, namely by obeying what his word says. So I'll ask you the question, which son believed and therefore is in the kingdom of heaven? The first one. Even though he disobeyed at first, so I, I was thinking of some sort of story to tell at the beginning when when I did something that I was told not to do and it turned out really bad, and I just couldn't narrow it down. So I I don't have anything for you, but there have been so many times in my life that. Someone who is in authority over me says, hey, you you probably shouldn't do that. And I went ahead and did it anyway, and it turned out really bad. And so that's kind of the opposite of what we're seeing. Um, But the first son in this parable says to his father, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go and ask, uh, go and do what you've asked of me. And And he goes away. He doesn't try to hide his disobedience. He doesn't try to pretty himself up and be like, yeah, I guess maybe I'll do that. Uh, He just says flat out, no, I'm I'm not going to do it. But then then he goes away and something changes in his mind. And he decides to go. He decides to obey. But contrast that with the second son who says just flat out, no. Sorry, no. He says, I will go but doesn't. He lies, but let's be honest, he looks good doing it. He tries to hide his disobedience. He, he's the kind of person who, um, we'll talk about in a second, who, who knows all the right answers and, and who can quote all the right passages, all those sort of things, um, and looks really good on the outside, and yet he's full of disobedience. And so Jesus is telling this parable to a bunch of people who talked a lot about obedience, but did almost nothing about it. 
They're not living their life in obedience to God. They're just talking about it. And he even says something as harsh as saying, John, came, John the Baptist came preaching to you about this, and you did not respond. And then not only that, but Jesus comes preaching and, and says, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand, and they do not respond. They're hearing what God requires, and they just flat out say, No, I will not go. And Jesus is revealing to them that they are not living in obedience. So we would say this, the fruit of one's life ultimately proves whether or not one is obedient to God's message. So the way that you live is shown by what you believe. And, and I hope I sound like a broken record when I say that, because I, I really want to challenge all of you to think about, okay, what, what do I believe? If I am claiming to be a follower of Christ, is that being shown by the way that I live my life? Because if it's not, that's the height of hypocrisy. The person's actions ultimately prove what they believe. And, and the people in this parable, they have some pretty rotten fruit. Their lives might look good on the outside, but you bite into that apple and it's nothing but brown. And that's, that's no fun at all. So... The first son, when we think about the first son who says, I will not go, but then goes, think of him maybe as, um, just to kind of make this practical, an atheist who, who openly denies God and goes against him and wants everyone to know about it. There's, there's that joke, um, an atheist, a vegan, and a crossfitter walk into a bar. How do you know? Because within three seconds they tell everybody about it. And, and the first son is blatant in his disobedience, and, and he's just like, no, I, I'm not going to go. But, but it's interesting because something changes, though. So his sin might be public, and he, he doesn't care. He doesn't have this image to uphold. He doesn't have this, this righteous standard to live up to. He wasn't raised in church or, or you know, knowing all of the... the the little nursery rhymes. He just doesn't care about God. But then the second son is the kid who grew up in church, has all the right answers, can quote all the right passages, but is more concerned about having the right answers than actually being righteous. He's more concerned about what people think of him and, and his walk with God than he is actually having a walk with God. And he wants everyone to think that he is the best Christian that has ever lived. So in, in those two descriptions, which, which one do you relate with more? Maybe, maybe you weren't raised in church. Maybe you had... Nobody uh, to impress. Maybe you were raised in church uh, and think like I used to think that, you know, I, I have to impress everyone with my supposed faith. I definitely relate with the second son. Uh, I, was, I was the kid who had all the right answers. I could sing all the right VBS songs, you know, Father Abraham, all, all those sort of things. And, and I wanted everybody to know that. I wanted everybody to look at me and be like, man, that kid has it all together. But I didn't. And so, which son is worse? Which son do you think is worse? Anyone? The second one. And that was me. Like, I, I was the second son. <clears throat> the second son is definitely worse. Because no matter, no, no matter what, he's not doing it you know, for, for any sort of godly purposes. And yet, it's the second son that Jesus says gains entrance to the kingdom. So why is that? Like, like that doesn't make sense. It's because no matter how much he disobeyed, something in his mind changes. And he moves from disobedience to obedience. So I, I, don't know, I don't know where you are right now. 
I, I don't know which which kind of son relation that you would put yourself under first or second. I don't know what you're struggling with. I, you're probably struggling with something. I don't know a lot about your past. But I do know that no matter what disobedience is back there, no matter what sin may be in your past that, that you're still struggling with, no matter what feelings of, of inadequacy, whatever it might be, you're not without hope. Jesus is talking to a bunch of people who supposedly had it all together. And yet, he tells them, you will not enter the kingdom of God. Why? They didn't believe. And they didn't change their minds about who Jesus was and choose to live in obedience to him. And so, here's, here's what, what matters. The, the son changes his mind. And once his mind changes, so does his life. As soon as he believed, he obeyed. He went and did what he was supposed to do. And that is what Jesus says allows him to be in the kingdom. So, so to boil all of that down, one, one little sentence, doing is more important than saying. The first son was doing. He was obeying. And so if we summarize this parable even, God commands all people to do his will. Some promise to obey but do not. Some rebel and then later submit. All of us at one point or another we're walking in disobedience to God. But God changes minds. He changes hearts. And he causes us then to start walking in obedience to him. And that, that's, that's really what salvation is. We said no to God. But then he changes our minds. So that we can obey him. So, really, all, all that I would say, live in obedience to God. And, and again, just a challenge. Don't, don't just claim to be a Christian. Be one by obeying God. And, and not only that, let's, let's do that together. So, New Life is, is here as a campus ministry on campus to make disciples, and <clears throat> we're going to try and live that out. We're not, we're not going to try to just claim to be Christians. We're going to try to be Christians by obeying God. And, and no matter where you are, right here, right now, we can help you with that. <laughs> Ultimately, it's going to be God. Uh, who, who changes hearts and changes minds, but, but we're going to be here to show the love of Christ. Um, so when it comes down to it, I hope that, that you can find that here. Uh, and we are embarking on a new semester, um, starting some things fresh, um, starting some things new. Um, but one thing is going to remain the same, and that is that, that we're going to do as best as we can to follow and obey uh, what God has said. So, in order to do that, each week we're going to open up his word, uh, but then we're also going to, to break off into small groups uh, to talk about some things a little bit more. And I have some questions up on, up on the screen each week for us to consider. And sometimes they're going to be just really terrible questions. Uh, because they're not going to relate to anything that, that you learned, anything that you took away from God's Word. And, and that's okay. If you spend your time talking about something other than what's up on the board, that's fine. Just talk about something uh, as it pertains to 
God and his word and what he commands. So I, I'm just going to stop talking. I'm going to pray for that time. Then get in groups of like four. And if you can help it, don't make it bigger than four. Uh, just so that you can have some, some good conversation. Um, but let me pray and then just find a spot in the room. I'll throw in some music and we'll talk for a little bit. we got a little bit of time left, so let's pray. God, thank you <clears throat> for this time. Thank you for your word. Uh, thank you that you change minds. Uh, would you even do that in some of us here tonight uh, to help us live fully in obedience to you? Uh, be with our time and discussion and help it, God, to be beneficial to one another. Uh, and I just pray that you would be glorified in it. And God, we love you, we praise you, and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Say hi to Lou. Hello. There's some. Not her aware of Same passage, just last week. Yeah, 28.